What's up guys, Christopher for Crisis Point and welcome back to the channel. And this right here are the two brand new smartphones from Realme in the Philippines, which will be focusing on the 10 Pro 5G. Now I've been using the 10 Pro 5G for about over two or three weeks now, much longer than the 10 Pro Plus, mainly because I wanted to see what this thing brings to the table in contrast to the price point. So with that said, let's do this. Right, so around back we have some key features of the Realme 10 Pro 5G, which is basically similar to that of the Pro Plus variant with just a few minor changes. First and foremost, we have a 120Hz refresh rate display, a 108MP ProLite camera, a 5000 mAh battery with support for 33 watt fast charging, and a Snapdragon 695 5G chipset at the helm. Inside, we have the welcome packet that contains some of the necessities in getting a new smartphone, particularly a free jelly case, the 33 watt charger in the box, a Type-C cable for charging, and the device itself. And design-wise, I think this is a bit of a unique twist. It's like a mix between the Sunrise Blue color variant for the 9 Pro Plus and a body of the C35 from Realme in 2022. Pretty interesting stuff because we're now seeing a variation where they mix and match certain elements that would actually worked previously into one package. However, despite looking so candy-like, don't be fooled because the body on the 10 Pro 5G actually feels very sturdy and enduring. So this this can potentially stand the test of time for the months and years to come. Towards the right, we have a power button that doubles as a sleepway key and a touch sensor next to the volume rockers. Up top, we have a secondary microphone for noise cancelling. Towards the left, we have a hybrid SIM card tray that houses either two nano SIM cards or one micro SD and a nano slim. Down at the bottom, we have the primary speaker, the Type-C port for charging and data transfer, the primary microphone, and a 3.5 jack, which not a lot of brands do nowadays. So as far as the design is concerned, in the grander scheme of things, I think Realme did an amazing job with the 10 Pro series. The 10 Pro Plus is sexy. The 10 Pro 5G, on the other hand, is just basically the end product if you were to combine the color variant as well as the design choice of two of the most popular smartphones in the Philippines in 2022, which I think Realme did an excellent job in executing. <laughs> Now as far as the screen is concerned, the Realme 10 Pro 5G comes with an IPS LCD panel. This is basically one of those differences with the Pro Plus. But despite having an IPS panel, this comes with a resolution of 1080p by 2400 pixels that is paired with a 120Hz refresh rate. It's basically the same features as you would see on the 10 Pro Plus. And the only real difference is that the other is supporting an AMOLED display, whereas the non-plus variant is using an IPS LCD panel. Either way, it's a win-win because both are catering to full HD resolution with 120Hz refresh rate across the board. Initially, when you first power on the device, the refresh rate is set to auto, which basically allows the device to smartly configure or change the refresh rate depending on whatever activity you're doing on your smartphone. But you do have the option to set it to high specifically or standard that would actually conserve more battery. The 10 Pro 5G also comes with a few features, particularly eye comfort, which can automatically change the color tone of the display. So if you're the type who have like sensitive eyes, where you can't stand the blue light or if the, the screen is too warm, you do have the option to calibrate and change this depending on your preference. Now out of the box, the 10 Pro 5G is treated with the latest and greatest of what Realme has to offer, giving you an up-to-date software experience across the board. This of course includes the highly popular RAM expansion, which allows you to double the amount of RAM that you actually have on your device. This of course uses a portion of your storage, which I personally think is not a major deal breaker considering that the storage of the 10 Pro 5G is expandable via microSD. This of course allows the device to perform a lot more fluidly and efficient be it with social media, gaming, and multitasking and the like. <laughs> So in terms of gaming, the Realme 10 Pro 5G is rocking a Qualcomm Snapdragon 695 5G processor at the helm. This is paired with the Adreno 619 GPU that comes with 6, 8, or 12 gigabytes of RAM depending on the storage configuration. So that's a lot of memory resource 
to pair with the Snapdragon 695 5G processor. This actually makes the device a lot more powerful than you think, considering it is only a mid-range device. So this is actually one of the most uh, highly talked about racing games nowadays, which is Car X Street. I'm not exactly a big racing type of fan, uh, nor do I spend that much time with racing games, but because it is quite the demanding type of title nowadays because of online streamers trying to just kill the time playing games and whatnot. So on the Realme 10 Pro 5G, I actually like how the physics of the game is whenever I would crash into something or just by having to press the brakes or gas and whatnot. I did not encounter any issues whatsoever with the Realme 10 Pro 5G. However, and just a small disclaimer, this is still a mid-range device, so you will encounter a bit of a delay here and there, but it's not too impacting that it will destroy the overall gaming experience. So to elevate this, you just have to find that sweet spot in configuring the graphics of the game on what actually works with the game and what doesn't work. That way, the overall experience in playing the actual game will be enjoyable all throughout, as opposed to having to crank up the graphics so high, even if you know that this is a mid-range device where it can potentially struggle. So best to just keep it at its recommended levels. Overall, during my testing with Car X Street, it was actually pretty fun. I like the idea that you do have the option to just mindlessly drive your car all around the street without having to worry about a time limit. It's pretty interesting actually. You might want to check it out. It is available on the Play Store as of today, not sponsored. Next we have Street Fighter 4 Champion Edition. So I am a big fighting games type of person. I spend hours in the arcade playing fighting games, which ranges from Street Fighter, Tekken, Marvel, the works. And this game actually was first released on iOS way back in 2010. This was during the small smartphone era, which a few years ago was just ported into the Android ecosystem. What's interesting about the Street Fighter 4 Champion Edition is that although the game looks relatively pixelated because this was originally designed for a screen that is just 4 inches, so considering that the Realme 10 Pro 5G and the rest of the Android smartphones of the world it has more than 6 inches of a screen size, you can expect some pixelation to take place. But that doesn't necessarily mean that this is a bad display. This is really more on the game itself, not on a 10 Pro 5G. And the only reason why I'm even showcasing this particular game is mainly because of how responsive the actual game is on every touch. That alone, once you reach that certain limit in the game, you can cast out their ultimate skills, which I can honestly say this is one of the best special attack move implementations I've seen on an Android fighting game, which is very rare, even in 2023. Now, if there's anything I'd like to point out as far as gaming is concerned on the 10 Pro 5G is that despite having to spend an hour or two extensively playing different titles on the device itself, it didn't encounter any heating moments. It was cool to the touch. You will notice that the temperature would change a bit, but it's not too impacting that it makes the device uncomfortable to hold. So that's a win in terms of thermal management for the 10 Pro 5G. Right, so now let's talk about the camera performance on the 10 Pro 5G. <laughs> This is actually where I was a little bit curious on how it would actually perform because of two things. First one is it has the same 108 megapixel lens that is found on the 10 Pro Plus 5G. I'm not sure if it's the exact same sensor, but obviously the megapixel count is the same. Next would be the chipset. So we all know that most often than not, if a smartphone has a higher end chipset, the image processing of photos being taken with that smartphone would be a lot greater or a lot faster. Considering that the 695 is relatively slower than the Dimensity 920 that's found on the 10 Pro Plus 5G, I was already setting up myself to the point where I would assume the images taken on the 10 Pro 5G would not be better. But it turns out that it's actually a mixed bag and it depends on certain factors. First and foremost is the light source. If you're taking photos with the 10 Pro 5G outdoors, depending on the time of day or the angle to which you're taking the photo of, the images that you'll be able to capture would be great. It actually falls under my definition of great. When taking photos where there is multiple light sources, vibrant colors, the images captured on the 10 Pro 5G is awesome. Now, I did try to take several pictures with the device in photo mode and in 108 megapixel mode, just like what I did with the 10 Pro Plus. And although there is a bit of an inconsistency with the overall image produced, both photos taken 
for that same subject still came out great in my honest opinion. If there's anything that would be a bit of a miss for me, it is with the video recording. Although it is capable, very capable, in shooting 1080p or 720p with steady mode turned on, it lacked some of the video recording features that are found on the 10 Pro Plus 5G. But in terms of just taking photos, regardless of the angle or the design or whatever theme you're thinking about when taking photos on a smartphone, the 10 Pro 5G can do exactly what the 10 Pro Plus 5G can do even better. So in summary, the 10 Pro 5G from Realme is obviously the more affordable variant, but it's not by any means a factor for you to disregard as a good smartphone. As a matter of fact, the 10 Pro 5G can go head to head with its sibling across the board. Obviously in terms of the design, this is going to fall under your own personal preference. If you prefer a curved design or a boxy design, that's totally up to you. But if you are gonna get the 10 Pro 5G as your next smartphone in 2023, not only will you get a beautiful display, very capable chipset, good amount of storage, which is expandable, a 5,000 milliamp battery that supports quick charge, decent audio experience, and a really, really good camera lens. This is actually a very balanced smartphone that comes with a very affordable price tag. And that's pretty much it for this quick review video of the Realme 10 Pro 5G. Let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Consider subscribing to the channel for more tech reviews and unboxing videos. And if by any chance you're in the market for a new smartphone, I'll drop the links below on where you can get this for the best possible price. Thanks again for watching. This is Chris once again from Crisis Point, and I'll catch you in the next.